Welcome back everyone. I just got home from a very long week in the field for my job in the Air Force and currently it is negative 17 degrees here in Minot, North Dakota. But we gotta do this. We gotta make another video, an update to my Schwab $25,000 brokerage account challenge. In the event you haven't seen any of these videos before, I will include the playlist down below. And it's me versus that total stock market index fund. And my positions in this video are current as of February 11th. This is day 28 of 252 for this uh, trading challenge. And in my videos, when I speak generally of the market, I always reference the S&P. Now, the S&P is only the 500 largest publicly traded companies, but I use this as the market. But somebody in a previous video did point out that I am competing against a total stock market index fund, which has about 20% more uh, companies, well, about 2,000 more. What I mean by this is that the S&P and the total stock market index are about 80% the same. Now, yes, that 20% difference of various small cap companies does make a difference. For example, uh, the S&P since January 29th was up 5.44%. But, my, the, but the total stock market uh, index fund was up 6.14. The reason why is because the small caps are doing very well right now as people are looking for value, looking for places to put their money. And uh, just generally when I refer to the market, I always reference the S&P because this is how people broadly measure it. But yes, in this video challenge, I am, I am competing against a total stock market index fund. And the index fund is up $1.79, up from its originating uh, $25, which is a 7.16% increase. That's pretty good. And I am up 1,678, or only 6.71%. However, I don't think this tells the whole story. I actually think I am winning, and there's a glitch in my account. I'll see if you can notice it, but I will point it out to you why I think there's an error uh, in my account. These are my positions current as of February 3rd, the last time I did an update. You can pause the video if you want to look at them. And this is what, it, this is what it has changed to as of uh, February 11th. Now I gotta be honest with you guys, the market is at all time highs right now. It just keeps going up, just up and up and up. And when you're a swing trader, you make money in stocks by buying low and selling high. You, you wanna see dips. D dips at least in certain sectors, not necessarily entire markets, but literally across the board, almost everything is up. So I'm, I'm having to wrap my mind around this idea of buy high, sell higher. Everything is at all time highs. So all I can do is buy high and sell higher. So I'm doing my best uh, looking for stocks that I think are in an uptrend and should continue in the near future. But honestly, this is, being, this is becoming more challenging than I thought it would be simply because the market is doing so well. When we look at the S&P over the last five years, there's been years like 2017 was just a clear, linear, straightward uptrend. 2018 was a bit more rocky. 2019 had some sweet dips that could have made a lot of money. And obviously 2020, uh, if you uh, held your nerves and then was willing to go on margin, uh, you could have made a lot of money that year. But uh, the, the total stock market index fund being up 7% in five weeks, I mean, 10% is the long-term average per the year, and, and we've already hit seven in five weeks. But let's go ahead and talk about the four positions that I closed out. The first one is Huntington Ingalls. It's a defense contractor. Lockheed Martin and the other defense contractors just aren't doing well because of perception, though the fundamentals are still there. I just wanted to exit this position while I was still positive, so I sold it for a $24 profit. $24, I'll take it. The next position I closed, I'm pretty proud of, and this was Citizens Financial Group. My cost basis was a little over 3,000. I sold for a $222 profit, 7.3%. And when you look at the chart, uh, you know, it shot up all the way to here. It then went below the 20. I waited. It then hit the 50, and I said, that's that's the go mark. Immediately rebounded. Uh, it then started to turn down again, so I decided to take profit. And CFG is the error in my account. So I sold a put contract for, to expire next Friday, February 19th, for the strike price of 35 
The current price of the stock is 39. We are not close to 35. So my cost basis, what I was paid for the contract was $89.35, but it's telling me that the last contract sold uh, for this put was 250, which isn't possible. There's, there's nobody paying $250 for a strike price of 35 when it's, com when it's way out of the money. So look at this, look at this glitch. It's telling me that my percent change for the day was negative 16,000%. So what this means is uh, this, this, this contract next Friday is going to expire worthless out of the money unless uh, CFG stock price just tanks. So I should be up closer to another $200 in my account value. That's not reflecting because whatever this contract is, is, is not accurately reporting the proper amount in my account. Next position is MetLife, and I think I only held this for two or three days. Cost basis, $1,967, sold for a $135 profit. When I saw it uh, dip down and get close to that 50-day moving average line, that's, that's when I bought in, and it immediately shot back up. So I'm, I'm happy to take my 6.8% profit on that trade. I would happily swing into MetLife again. They had their Golden Cross events right here, and it's in a clear upward trend. Fundamentals look solid. If this stock takes another dip, I will go back in. With JP Morgan Chase, cost basis was $2,100. I sold for a $111 profit, or 5.2%. Once again, it got, it got below the 20-day moving average after being overbought uh, right here. I, I bought when it was close to that 50-day moving average. It then shot back up, and I decided to take profit. Uh, I will happily take 5.2%. Let's now talk about the positions that I opened, and the first one is Charles Schwab itself, which is fun because I'm doing this challenge in my Schwab brokerage account. Something funny about Schwab is they don't give themselves a rating. So these letter grades are what Schwab rates all the other companies, and they don't give themselves an analyst rating because how can you be impartial when you're rating yourself? And when you look at their stock chart, it shot up uh, the same time all the other financial stocks did. It then had a huge pullback to where it got below the 50-day moving average, so that seemed like a good time to jump into the stock. It's been trading um, sideways the last four or five days while everything else is up, but uh, if, it, if it doesn't doesn't get back above that 20-day soon, I might just close it out. Its PE is currently 26, forward PE 18, uh, the dividend, nothing, nothing special. It's price to free cash flow being 59, that's pretty high. Uh, so I think this is a company that's been retooling uh, and is, is looking to be extremely profitable in the near future. But right now, I, I don't know why their price to free cash flow is so high, but otherwise Schwab is looking pretty good. Let's now cover two new positions I opened, and this is FMC Corp and uh, Interpublic Group uh, Corporation, IPG. I'm not sure. And both of these stocks did the exact same thing when they reported their earnings. So look at this red uh, bar down here showing volume of trade. Huge sell-off. This was not uh, a collected decision by a bunch of individual traders. This was one giant fund that decided to liquidate their entire position for whatever reason in FMC Corp. So there was a huge sell-off where it went from 116 all the way down to like 108. Why did this uh, fund or whoever sell off FMC? Because FMC Corp beat earnings and revenue estimates for quarter four? I don't know. I see this sometimes. As soon as a company reports uh, their earnings, doesn't matter if it's good or if it doesn't matter it's bad that, that this fund or whoever decides they want to close out this position altogether. So why, if the company reported that it had a great fourth quarter, would there be a massive sell-off in the stock? Once again, it's about expectations. Even though they beat the estimates, like whoever was invested in this company might have thought it was going to do way better than what the professional analysts were saying it was going to do. So even though it, 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 beat expect it beat earnings, it didn't live up to somebody's expectations and they sold off their position. But the PE is 25, forward PE is 15, dividend yields 1.74. I, I like this stock. Oh, this is, a, this is an agricultural uh, company that makes um, agricultural inputs. I don't know what that means. I honestly don't know a lot about this company, guys. 
but I saw that I saw that huge sell off and it just seemed like a like an easy swing in. As soon as it rebounds to close to where uh, the sell off occurred, I'll happily exit. But when you see a movement that big, it just seems like a really solid opportunity to fill the gap. And the exact same thing happened with Interpublic Group. This was two days ago where, you know, their adjusted earnings beat the estimates. They had a good quarter. <laughs> so what happens? Uh, big sell-off. You know, look at this, look at this red um, bar down here where somebody said, hey, you know, their quarter reported and they didn't live up to our expectations or whatever. So there was a huge sell-off. Something I want to point out with IPG is they had their Golden Cross events in late November with a 50-day move uh, above the 200 days, so this, this stock's in a clear uptrend now and looks good to me. Their fundamentals, PE currently 17, forward PE 13, dividend yield 4.17. Uh, it's an advertising agency, uh, so that's what the IPG group is. Let's now cover probably my three worst positions, and this would be Verizon, AT&T, and Costco. When I took these positions at the beginning of the challenge, once again, the stock market was at an all-time high. So I was looking for companies that I thought that were, were well-valued, not overpriced, and could potentially go up higher. Well, you know, it's been over a month now that I've held these three positions, and I, I have to just be honest with myself and say, they're not going up. I, I think if this was a buy and hold situation for longer than a year, these three uh, stocks are good. Verizon and AT&T are solid dividend stocks. Costco is more of a growth stock company, but it might have just ran up too much last year during the pandemic, and people feel like it was overbought last year. Just Let's just look at the stock charts here. First one being Verizon. It's below its 20, 50, 100, and 200-day average. And I don't know what people are waiting for. The fundamentals of Verizon are, are good. You know, you look at this, you look at this 200 day moving average and it's basically a flat line because this is once again a, a solid dividend stock that people put their money into when they just wanna, they wanna collect that dividend. And the fact that it's not, it's not returning to its 200 day moving average makes me think that investors are not wasting their time with Verizon because there's so many other uptrending stocks to jump in right now. However, if any of those trends reverse or they feel like they're overbought, they will eventually come back to Verizon. This is a good uh, company that retains its value over the long run, but is it gonna go back up to its 200 day moving average in the next two or three days, two or three weeks? Probably not. So at this point, I, I'm thinking about just selling for a loss because my money is better, use, uh, better used elsewhere in nice uptrending stocks that I can swing in and out of. AT&T is the same. I was waiting for this 200 day moving average to come down and then I thought there'd be a trend reversal where AT&T stock could get closer to where it was pre-pandemic, but it's just going sideways. Like I've never seen this before where all four trend lines are just perfectly moving uh, horizontal to each other. Is AT&T gonna shoot up uh, 10, 20% in the next couple of months? I, I do think so. But once again, the money that I have sitting in there is not doing anything for me in the next couple of days, or next couple of weeks. So I might have to sell my position at a loss because I can be making more money with that money elsewhere. Now with Costco, it's a slightly different story. Once again, there's nothing wrong with Costco's fundamentals or profitability. And the stock peaked close to 400 back in, let's see, December. So it's been on a downtrend for almost two months. And what I think is gonna happen is Costco is gonna hit that 200 day moving average. It's so close. Uh, so we got the current share price is at 352 and the 200 day moving average is at 344. So I think as soon as it hits that 200 day, it's gonna bounce off of it and there's gonna be a big purchase. So my game plan with Costco, I'm currently down a little over 4%, is I'm gonna wait to see what happens tomorrow, uh, and then I might double up my position. Now, if I'm currently down 5% and I double up my position, then my cost basis is only down 2.5%. That makes it easier for me to get back above my cost basis, get out of this position, and uh, you know, try and get into other stocks that can make me more money.
So let's just go ahead and recap with Costco. I'm thinking about doubling my position as the share price approaches that 200 day moving average line. With Verizon and AT&T, I'm, I'm, I might just get rid of them on Monday or Tuesday if, if nothing happens. I, I would love to get back above my cost basis, but once again, I'm wasting time uh, that I could be making more money in other stocks. With Xerox, I'm still waiting for that covered call to expire next Friday. I'm gonna lose the 100 share, but I will, I will make a profit uh, once the contract is exercised. Synchrony, still doing good. I think I'm up like six or 7%, but I don't think this stock has peaked yet. Johnson & Johnson, uh, I'm still expecting this to pop huge uh, once the vaccine is approved for emergency use. Uh, I think the share price is gonna do pretty well once governments and states start placing their orders for hundreds of millions of doses of, uh, of their vaccine. Same thing with Apple stock. It's still down about five or 6% from its high. And I feel like they've got some press conferences coming pretty soon about new products coming out this year that's gonna drive their share price up. For my new positions, Charles Schwab, FMC, and IPG, I'm looking for closer to 5% for all three. Uh, but once again, once I'm above 5%, if I would rather uh, sell off that position and swing it into a stock that's negative, uh, I'm, I'm happy to get what I can get. Okay guys, thanks for watching this update video. Give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for whatever reason. And as always with my videos, if you have any questions about any of the websites that I use or anything I say, I'm kind of tired right now, so I might have misspoke at some point in the video. So if you want clarification, leave a comment down below. I will respond. And until the next video, take care.